The following program is intended for mature audiences. The time is now for the hardest hitting, yet completely trivial, football show on the planet. You are in rarefied territory. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well, to the broken helmet. Let's rock. Yeah. Coming to you live on tape on this Sunday, January 8th, 2023. A follow-up broken helmet as I did ultimately get my brother's picks in late last night after I recorded the podcast. I said I was going to get him in here. And I also had wanted to, not had to, but I wanted to uh, re-record just to... You know, acknowledge the egg on my face. No pun intended. No pun intended. (laughs) Well, anyway, as if you listen to the podcast and by judging by the numbers, you haven't. It's that I went on this whole rant about the Seattle versus Green Bay versus Lions playoff scenario. And I was wrong. You are a stupid asshole. That's exactly what he is. I actually can't believe what I just saw. That guy is a disgrace to the uniform. We're cakes for nothing. And I don't know how else to say it. Uh, I just completely royally fucked that whole part up. And like I said, uh, I (laughs) have not been on my game in 2022 into 23. Uh, I've been spread a little thin. Uh, you know, I, I don't know the podcast is, is suffered as a result, but it's, you know, sometimes it's difficult to try to find time to get everything in when you're doing something for fun. And I do this because I really do thoroughly enjoy broadcasting. Uh, you know, it was a passion of mine in college and then I revisited, it, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to bore everybody to death. I do that enough. But, uh, you know, as doing something as a passion, I like for the thing to be solid and over the years I put a lot of time and effort into it Uh, I peeled back that time at least this year uh, maybe not so much last year but this year just because I spread a little thin with other things and you know at certain times I've I've completely fudged up shit like uh, you know teams that are home that should be away I definitely haven't looked at the or brought the DVOA statistics like I usually do um, there is certain things that I didn't do, I, and you know I, I hate it because I, I say it and it's wrong, and then I feel like an idiot. But it is what it is. I don't take anything down, so all my errors and screw ups are all up there. Because if you're going to take it down and edit it, I, you know what are you trying to do? Who are you trying to kid? <laughs> you're trying to be perfect? No, you're not. Troy Aikman last night is sitting there on a third down going into the half, and he, I, I know what he was trying. He was trying to go at. The quarterback for making a novice decision not to throw the ball away, I guess. And it was third and change, and he listened. And, and then he basically like tried to put the onus on it, but it was third down, and they were just going to kick the they were just going to kick the field goal anyway. So it didn't really matter. So then he tried to go into some kind of long winded uh, ex- explanation about how, ah, oh, well, you know, if he had done that, uh, they, they could have had the option as to deciding on whether or not they wanted to go on fourth down, uh, but now they don't have a choice. Go for it on fourth down. <laughs> What are you kidding me? It's the end of the half. They're just going to kick the field goal. Points are at a premium in this game. Um, so mistakes happen, and uh, as a result, I don't take anything down. Uh, I'm not ashamed of anything. I do this all, all this for fun. And uh, if anybody does listen, I hope that they get a kick out of it here and there. And sometimes we have some good tidbits, and it's something that fun for me and my brother to do um, as well. So uh, and I'd like to expand it, like to go interview more people going forward, try to... Uh, you know, open up, uh, open up the podcast, if you will. I've been saying that for a year, haven't done it, but anyway. So, reverting back to uh, where I started this whole diatribe here, and that is with the screw up on Seattle. Yeah, the mistake is on me. I went to ESPN. I went to their standings, and I'll read it right here. If you go to their standings and you go to playoff and you go to expanded, underneath it goes. You know the the reason for their seating. And right here, six is the Giants. They're the last team locked in. Seven is Seattle, followed by Detroit and Green Bay. If you scroll to the reason why they're in seventh, it says right here, Seattle wins tiebreaker over Detroit based on head-to-head win percentage. Division tiebreak was initially used to eliminate Green Bay. In parentheses, Detroit wins tiebreaker over Green Bay based on head-to-head win percentage. Then Detroit, it says, wins tiebreaker over Green Bay based on head-to-head win percentage. And Green Bay, it has nothing. So based on that, I 
blatantly thought that Seattle was in the driver's seat. Had I just spent two seconds just, and, and it screwed me up in my head because I couldn't understand why they would have put that Sunday night game on when it could have meant nothing. And I, it, it sat there and it kind of bothered me and I was just too damn lazy to go to the internet and do a quick Google search. Had I done that, it would have taken two seconds to pull up an explanation as to why it was the Sunday night game was what it was. And that was because whoever wins that is in. So, or I, and, and I shouldn't even say that. I, I think the winner of that is in. I Maybe Detroit wins and, and Seattle wins, then Seattle's in. I, th- I think that's what it is. A matter of fact, because as I was looking at this thing last night, and I'm like, oh, man, I was wrong about that whole thing. I think it said that Seattle needs help, Seattle needs to win, and then Detroit has to win. So I guess if Seattle loses, then that game is a win and in, the Sunday night game, that is. And if Seattle wins, then it's Green Bay wins and in, and Detroit loses, Seattle's in. So that, that, that's the way that whole thing plays out. It doesn't really affect my pick in that game. I picked Detroit. I picked Detroit anyway. And what I fired up the microphone here to do today was just to give my brother's picks. Um, because, like I said, I didn't think I was going to be able to get this in because my son had a wrestling match. And like I said, am I spread thin? I am spread thin. And I screwed up the time on that uh, tournament. So the tournament isn't until 1 o'clock this afternoon. So they gave me a little time here. Uh, it is currently Sunday at about 10 to 11. So I've got about probably 15 minutes to get this in here before we got to hit the road and go to Butler, New Jersey for a uh, the Butler Novice 1 2 year tournament. So uh, wrestling, that is wrestling. Great sport. And if uh, you, you have young kids, uh, I, I had questions about it. I was not a wrestler, they had no programs when I was a kid growing up and so I ended up playing football and basketball and uh, ultimately when I went to high school I didn't make the basketball team and then I decided to do track instead and you know try to run and lift weights uh, instead I should have done wrestling uh, but you know I, I just wasn't you know it was unfamiliar to me and I was just kind of a candy ass and so I didn't do it uh, but it's a great sport for kids to get involved with I think it teaches a lot and it's been an, an excellent experience and there's my quick uh, little wrestling uh, tidbit so uh, I think I've said tidbit a lot uh, I, I said that and maybe diatribe I don't know I, I use words I like crutches and I, I reuse the same ones at, over and over all right anyway now that I've botched that whole thing what did we come to do we came to give uh we came to give picks for my brother here uh yesterday we did have two games uh kansas city las vegas that ended up being the favorite and the under 44 points was the total and kansas city won by 18 uh my brother had picked you know looking back kansas city was really kind of a great pick they were favored by eight and a half you could have brought that down to two and a half uh, depending on the book that you were using, and getting got Kansas City by a field goal. And you know that they won that game. So that would have been a great game had I been able to get the podcast in early enough. I did not, so I did not use them for anything. I did. I do think my brother had picked Kansas City. He I, he picks his games early and then just didn't get them to me until later. Uh, but anyway, so Kansas City, Vegas was the favorite in the under. Jacksonville, Tennessee, fantastic game. Great way to end the night. Much better than the first game. Jacksonville ends up winning. It ends up being a dog cover. Tennessee only lost by four, uh, and I think the line was somewhere around five and a half, six, and it was an under at uh, 36 points where the total was 38 and a half. So you had Jacksonville win 20 to 16 over Tennessee, ended up being a dog under. I don't know what the hell Tennessee was thinking about late in that game. I know it was whatever, third down, I think it was on that strip sack play. But, you know, you're in control. You've been playing good defense. Jacksonville hasn't lit you up. I mean, the last thing you want to do is have a turnover of some sort or or throw some error play into the game script. And there you go. You have him drop back. And he was doing okay, Dobbs. But, you know, he wasn't really lighting it up. I, I mean, he was... You know, he sufficed, right? And then all of a sudden you get the strip sack, and that ends the game. And I couldn't figure out why. Like, just give the ball back to Henry. If Henry doesn't get you the first down, then just punt. You got a really big punter. Punt the damn ball and then play defense. And instead, you know, they end up, you know, dropping back, and they try to get the first down, strip sack, touchdown, and that's it. Game over. Cash in. 
So Jacksonville moves on. So here we go back to the picks. Uh, we did this for me yesterday, so I won't go through all of the statistics, but I will get my brother's picks in there. So we'll start off Saints hosting the Panthers. We'll do all the crap games that really mean nothing to begin with, and then we'll go back into the games that do mean something. This game, Saints hosting the Panthers. Saints favored by three and a half. I had picked the Panthers. My brother's going to be on the other side. He is going to ultimately pick the Saints. Patriots, uh, no, that game means something, so let's go Colts. Colts hosting the Texans. Uh, Colts favored by two and a half here. Both my brother and I picked you picked the Houston and the two and a half points there. The other uh, crap game is Falcons Bucks. Uh, Bucks doesn't really mean anything to them. Falcons playing at home, terrible year. Ritter under center. Falcons favored by four here. I ended up taking the Falcons. My brother's going to be on the opposite side. He's going to end up taking Tampa Bay. As for the games that mean something, we'll start with the one that kind of means something. Vikings in Chicago facing off against the Bears. Vikings favored by six points. Both Eggie boys picked Minnesota in that one. The next one after that is going to be the Bills Patriots. I tried to get to this before, and then I pumped the brakes to go to those crap games. Bills favored by seven in Orchard Park. New England uh, trying to stay alive here. Uh, I ended up picking the Patriots on this, and my brother did as well. So we're both in on New England and the seven and a half. Bengals are going to be hosting the Ravens. Bengals favored by nine. Like I said, a big point spread. My brother does not like that one. He is going to go with Baltimore while I went with Cincinnati. Dolphins are going to be sitting in sunny Florida. Although I haven't checked the weather, so I don't know if it's sunny or rainy today, whatever it is. It's always nicer than it is in Jersey, that's for sure. And I know because I live down there. Uh, So Dolphins favored by three and a half versus New York. Uh, I took the Dolphins. My brother is also going to take the Dolphins and the three and a half. And the final game of 1 o'clock, that means something. Steelers-Browns. Steelers favored by 2.5 here at home. Uh, fighting for the playoffs, hoping things go their way. Both Eggy boys are in on Pittsburgh. 4 o'clock games. Let's roll them. We'll start off with a game that means nothing. Broncos versus the Chargers. Broncos favored by 3 points. At home, I ended up taking Russell Wilson in the season finale there in Denver. And, uh, well, I... I took the season finale there in Denver. I took Denver in the season finale. My brother went on the opposite, and he ended up taking the Chargers. The other game that doesn't mean anything but kind of means something, 49ers, Cardinals. Cardinals favored uh, underdogs here by 14 points on the road. 49ers trying to finish strong. Uh, Mitchell back there in the backfield for San Francisco. Uh, I ultimately took the Cardinals in the 14 points. My brother took the 49ers. The games that mean something, Cowboys-Commanders. This game played in Washington. Cowboys a road favorite by seven points here. I took the Cowboys in the seven points. My brother ended up taking the Commanders. Eagles hosting the Giants. Eagles a monster favorite at 16 points. Uh, Both of us ended up taking New York in that one. And then Seahawks-Rams, which I talked about before. This game could mean something. It could mean nothing. Seahawks have to win in order for them to have a shot at getting into the playoffs. Seahawks favored by six points. Uh, I am going to end up taking the Rams, and my brother took the Rams as well. And then that ends up bringing Sunday Night Football, like I mentioned, and it was the Packers hosting the Lions. Packers favored by five points. Uh, I took the Lions there in the five points, regardless of the way that it played out. My brother's going to be on the opposite end. He is going to end up taking the Packers. And then this brings us to our gambling picks. I will, uh, I've been saying all of mine a second time here, so I will do mine and his first. Our best bets, our locks. I took Pittsburgh. My brother is going to take Miami, hosting New York down there in, in sunny FLA, in South Florida. Uh, as for our Super Contest picks, I took Pittsburgh, Giants, Cincinnati, Denver, and the Rams. My brother ended up taking Kansas City. They were a lock. He took Minnesota, which I did not take. New England, Pittsburgh, which I did take. So give us both Pittsburgh on our best bets. And then Green Bay. So again, uh, I took Pittsburgh, as did my brother. Then I went with the Giants, Cincinnati, Denver, and the Rams. On the flip side, he took Kansas City, which has already won. Vikings, New England, and Green Bay. As for our parlays, I ended up doing, uh, let's see, I did Pittsburgh, Giants, and Denver. My brother on the flip side, he took Green Bay, New England, and Miami. So two completely unique parlays there for the Eggie brothers. As for teasers, I, well, we have some kind of similarities here. Let me see. 
Uh, no, we don't. We're actually on opposite ends in, in some regards. So I ended up taking Buffalo, Dallas, and I couldn't figure out which one to do, Cincinnati and Minnesota. Um, I like both legs. I ultimately went with Minnesota. So Buffalo, Dallas, Minnesota was my ultimate teaser. He ended up taking Baltimore, which was the opposite end of Cincinnati, which I was considering. He did Baltimore, New England, the Giants, and the Chargers. So he did the Baltimore Ravens, made them a big time underdog he took New England made them a big time underdog took the Giants made them a monster underdog and then took the Chargers and made them a big underdog too so he went four dogs making them all big line spreads I went the other way uh, I went the you know the slap way of taking you know, you know long favorites and trying to make them short Prop bets. I ended up doing uh, Najee Harris for over 71 and a half rushing yards. He ended up taking Baker Mayfield over 186 and a half passing yards. So he went with the Rams, who I did like. And so I'm kind of with him there. Uh, I hope that pulls through because that would probably uh, bode well for my Rams pick there against the Chargers. Uh, well, sorry, uh, Rams pick against uh, Seattle there. And I think they were getting six points, right? So I don't know the updated line. Again, the lines that I pulled were from last night around, uh, God, I forgot what it was, maybe around 7 o'clock. So I have not checked the updated lines as of yet, but yesterday Rams were dogs by 6. So he's going Mayfield over the 186.5 mark. I'm doing Harris over the 71.5 mark. So now we're putting our money where our mouth is. With our bets, I only did a couple. I did the correlated part, the correlated teasers. Buffalo, Dallas, Minnesota as one. Buffalo, Dallas, Cincinnati as the other. And then I paired them to go Buffalo, Dallas, Minnesota, and Cincinnati together. So I'm hoping that you know one comes in, it covers all my bets. If two come in, then I get all three. As for my brother, he went a completely different route. Uh, he is going to do his uh, his bankroll right now is about 8500 He is ultimately going to do... Green Bay as a money line win. He's going to put a thousand for fifteen hundred on that one. He's going to take the spread in Miami. He's going to put a thousand for two thousand on that. He's going to have a money line parlay as well. He's going to do Buffalo, Minnesota, Dallas, and Green Bay five hundred to cash in sixteen hundred. So let's look at that Buffalo. I think they're definitely going to win. Minnesota, I definitely think they're, they're going to win because I have them in the spread to do just that. Dallas, same thing, and then they've got Green Bay. I like the lines in that one, so that I guess that's going to be where we differ there. But at least on the front end of that, Buffalo, Minnesota, and Dallas, I'm all in with them uh, because that's what I was basically trying to do with my parlay with my teasers. So he did Buffalo, Minnesota, Dallas, Green Bay, 500 for 1600. That brings us to his prop bets. He did take that Mayfield over, uh, and he put 100 on each of these. Mayfield over his yardage. He did Barton over seven and a half tackles, and then he did Quay Walker under six and a half tackles. So there you go. There is the week 18. Brother Eggie's version of the podcast got everything in there. Again, with the uh, egg on my face from my terrible Seattle Seahawk, Green Bay Packer, Detroit Lion breakdown. But now it makes a whole lot of sense why the Sunday night game is it is what it is. And we get to enjoy Sunday night football. End the season on a high note. See if Aaron Rodgers can play his way in to the NFL playoff tournament. So, with all that said, I'm out yet again. Enjoy your Sundays. All the best with your bets. Enjoy football. Enjoy your family. Hug a loved one. Enjoy the new year. And to anybody going to the Butler tournament, I hope you win. Unless you're facing off against Mason, then I hope you lose. Sayonara. Peace.